you what's going on y'all it's jay small reviews here back at it again with another video as you guys can see uh this will be recapping the divide and conquer event yesterday from rbe great 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 card uh eight out of ten if not a nine out of ten card really happy with the way all the battles played out a lot of great performances from vets that were doubted a lot of really good back and forth from battles that people weren't that interested at, at first and just tons of things to go through so as you you guys can see by the title and for those of you that have been here what we do is first we are going to go over the top three most disappointing performers in my opinion you know who came out even on the back end doesn't necessarily mean that you even had a bad performance with a card this good there's going to be some good performers on there but just the people that might have taken a little bit of a stock hit and then from there we get into the top three most impressive performers and highlighting the people that really walked away the biggest winners from the divide and conquer event and before that, we're going to do a little bit of talk of the battles that have a battler on each side that did not make the list. So we're going to start with a little bit of the miscellaneous talk, bottom three, top three. Without further ado, let's get right into the recap. So uh, the first two battles that we're going to talk about here, like I said, where neither battler is going to make the cut, but um, definitely, you know, good performances uh, shown. <coughs> Starting off, we have Coach Corleone versus B Magic, a matchup that I think a little people were confused on. Not a lot of people, especially those that haven't been watching Bags and Bodies, aren't fully hip to Coach Coleone, one of the more higher-rated bricks. And then Magic uh, is someone that I think is fun to watch right now as he further proves in this battle. Even if it's only at a mid-tier level, we are seeing a bit of a renaissance at B Magic, uh, a guy that's showing more effort. The flow pockets are always there. I mean, that's really the bare minimum when it comes to Magic. He's always been one of the most talented rappers, but in terms of the actual content within the punches, uh, I don't really think that he's just... It doesn't look like he's just putting it, you know what I'm saying, in autopilot. You know, there is some real good coach flips here. Uh, the Spreewell flip I thought was really dope. Tons and tons of good coach flips. I believe he had a Godfather Corleone flip in there. And overall, the flow pockets, like I said, were at 100. I mean, they always are usually good, but just like the past battle, just like the Fonz one-rounder, just like the Danny battle, man, you're still getting good content from B-Magic here. And on the flip side, Coach gave a very good performance, a breakout performance, um, especially within his first two rounds. I thought he was great. Uh, I did have Magic taking the third round of the battle relatively clear. My one issue is, though, and why this battle will need to replay back, is that I thought Coach won the first two rounds decisively on first watch, but, man, the crowd is ODing so much. I know there's brick love in there. It is a home game, but... If you gas a little too much, the truth is, is that it takes the attention off of the performance and actually will water it down. Uh, another example is you look at NWX, K-Shine. His performance versus Geechee Gotti in Volume 3 is a very, very good performance. But a lot of people at the time have a lot of pushback for that battle because it's almost hard to interpret if his performance is really that good because his peoples is going crazy and not acting like family men in the background. Um but it just goes to show you could have a good performance, and if your entourage is ODing, it actually takes away from the performance, which is why I think you see Magic, uh, you know, winning on the Let's Talk Battle Rap poll, for instance, some of the more known uh, polls and places where a consensus decision is, um, you know, people can take that as a piece of evidence. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, by any means that Magic just straight won the battle. I still have Coach a first watch, first and second, but it does look like it is somewhat debatable, and I would love to give it a watch back because it really is a great battle. It is a very good beat Magic. It is going to be a very positive performance for Corleone, even with the crowd doing a little bit too much. And overall, even though neither of them made either side of the list, and I have Coach 2-1, it looks like it could go out to be a debatable battle, and I really love both gentlemen's performance in this particular battle. And another brick battle that we're going to talk about, like I said, where neither made the side, that was still good on both sides, was bad news versus pain, that gritty talk. I knew going into this that this would be a goodie, and it lived up to that. I really, really, really want to praise bad news. Uh, I, obviously, I didn't have this channel, but a couple years ago, man, I would have told you Bad News is probably the worst active battle rapper alive. I really think, although his delivery has always been good, his content was just not battle rap worthy. And the growth that he's shown in the last year, particularly in a bar that I sent on Twitter, the uh, I have pain in pain, he, he gonna be full of himself. Stuff like that, those creative name flips, uh, just something that I didn't think he had that commonly before in this battle. You see all types of haymakers throughout. Uh, I think Payne did good as well. I think his third is clearly his best round. And I think he's really punching throughout the first and second too. But I had news clearly taking the first and second. Outperformed him. Had higher peaks with the haymakers. Although he still has air balls in between. The writing isn't perfectly structured for bad news. It definitely has just shown levels and levels of improvement. Like I said, you can debate that Payne got the third. But I think news just showed a little bit of seasoning here. Once again, net positive performance performance for both gentlemen 
but I did have bad news, 2-1 clear, um, and coming away with another big W on this run of his. And with those two battles wrapped up, uh, we can get into, you know, sadly, the top three most disappointing performers of the card. Just a little bit of this before we get into the top three most impressive. Um, and starting at number three, it's really someone that had a good performance last night, but walked into someone that was just too, too amazing on the card. And sadly, they were favored heavily going into this battle, so it has to be mentioned. So at number three, most disappointing... I do have a ward. Now, it's definitely a tough situation to be in because if you just go off of a strictly material, you could debate that a ward might be top five battlers on this card. Like, his material was still really good. I mean, I edged him the third of his battle, uh, and I think that he had a good second. While I don't think that he won, you know what I'm saying, the first or second by any means, I think he had a good second, even a decent first. Um, but sadly, going up against Big K, he was favored, I believe, 87 to 13. Uh, in the Let's Talk Battle Rap poll going up, which is just a stat that I'm going to use a lot because I'm Let's Talk Battle Rap staff. Um, but it is one of the more common prediction polls, right? So I think that if you look uniform across any uh, methods of prediction, most people would have told you they had a ward. And then when you added the prep time, I believe on this channel, um, on my last prediction for Divide and Conquer, I had a ward. I ended up, I did end up switching it back to Big K21 Edge uh, for my little champion Patreon vote. And if you guys saw my closure two predictions, I had Big K back then. So even though I flip flopped a little bit, I always thought it was going to be a close battle, and I always had a lot of more, uh, a lot more confidence in Big K's performance here than most people did. Um, which we'll get into his performance, you know what I'm saying, when we get to talk to him. But as for A-Ward, did really, really good. But when you're favored this much going into a grudge match, even though it's a lineup, you know, they kind of doubted your opponent, even though he's a lot better than what people were acting like he was. So it kind of put you in a messed up situation. But I still think while you were good, if your third round angle was first, might have changed the battle ups. That's a little bit of a mistake tactically. And on top of that, you know, if you're that favored and the guy kind of beats you clear like that, it has to be mentioned somewhat. I think the people acting like this a wards exposed this and that no i think that there was some there were some things here that made this a rough matchup for him that people didn't talk about a specific rough matchup for him but he's still in my opinion one of the best in the world one of the most consistent and even was good last night so it sucks to see him on the top three most disappointing but for me i just think that he has to be on here considering where he was coming into the battle um and then from there we can go right into number two and at number two most disappointing performers i do have jag uh which is kind of crazy because i there's not that much expected from jag realistically from the community but coming off of the show off performance that was easily his best performance yet he looked like he could be competitive with nearly anyone on the roster and he was talking really really crazy to rose coming into this battle and with all that being said while it was not a bad jag it definitely was a little bit of a regression to the jag we had seen pre-show off uh while he looked motivated there was definitely dry spots in there definitely lacked some of the haymakers before and when he did get into his real talk back it could come off a little bit fillery like the jag that we knew before so really just a return of form for him not the worst jag performance ever but Rosenberg, who isn't going to make the top three most impressive performers, but was an impressive performer last night, really just showed levels, his best performance since his ill will performance. The flow patterns mixed with the street talk. He's always going to have the flow patterns, kind of that Philly influence. But when you mix this, the, the real heavy street talk in with the cadence, he's one of the best on RBE and a dangerous battler for really any top tier, in my opinion, and just kind of showed levels here. So Chubby Jag, second most disappointing performer on the list. And that leaves us with the number one most disappointing performer uh, on this card, in my opinion. And that would have to go to Caution. Another crazy one, because Caution wasn't a zero. Caution wasn't bad. She didn't even choke. Uh, but while she did have decent material, her rounds were extremely, extremely short. Now, I don't know if this is going to be all three of her rounds at that. And I don't know if this is because of the C3 final coming up. If it is, more power to her because if she wins that battle, she's still in an absolutely great position. That really is the more important battle. But in coming into this battle, similar to A-Ward, but even more so, she was favored 90-something to like 8 coming in, 92 to 8. Extreme, extreme favorite uh, coming into this QB battle. All of us had her 3-0 for the most part. I think a few people might add QB, but I know that the very common pick was Caution. I even said Caution only has to be 70 or 80% to beat QB. And then we got the best QB we've gotten since QB versus Official. Uh, definitely great to see a legend bounce back like this. I suppose that I should have given it more thought since she was slowly trending upwards, battling upwards. You know, she's horrible versus 40 she was better versus Ward, but not great. Then she was pretty solid versus Shayna, and I, didn't, I just didn't see a career performance coming here. But 
really left the disrespect and pedophile shit behind, you know, all, like, the weird material and stuck mainly to haymakers, uh, name flips, angling, kind of showing that she's the foundation of the bricks, I believe had an angle approach about that in the second, and while Caution had decent rounds, couple of punches, couple of haymakers, it felt like each of them was two minutes while QB was giving you high quality, like, four or five minute rounds, just bombing on Caution's head. Like I said, not the worst caution performance, but when you're favored this much, especially going into this battle, and you clearly have short rounds while your opponent is, if it's not a body bag, it's close. You know what I mean? She definitely won all three rounds. So still think caution has a lot of great stuff ahead of her. Looking forward to what she's going to do on the Chrome uh, anniversary card in the final versus C3. Another great vet test for her, top tier lady test. But there's no question when you're favored this much and damn near get body bagged, there ha has to be talked about. And that's why for me, I had caution as the most disappointing performer on the divide and conquer card. Um, so, as I said, Ward and Caution, I thought, even did good, and they made the most disappointing, which just goes to show how good this card was, and now we can get more positive and get into my top three most impressive performers from Divide and Conquer. So, uh, to go into number three for the top three most impressive performers, someone we just talked about in the number one slot, uh, QB, QB Black Diamond Man, uh, incredible, like I said, uh, a vet that was really counted out and came back with really a career high, one of the best performances of her career. There's a reason the QB is so respected, and I feel like after seeing the 40 performance, that would have been one of the worst QBs in any era, to be honest with you. I know that people are like, oh, she has to adapt this and that, but she came with such a zero material that day, it really made you think, is she cut out for this anymore? That Even the QB back then, any other bad QBs, I don't think was as bad as that. But she came back, and I, I always get worried when content is in there, but in this battle the the put out caught the hazard lights bar you know what i'm saying caution and flash and hazard lights is crazy she had the you you drive trucks but you couldn't see dl coming uh the disclaimers bar the tax time bar all in the first round was great and that was the explosive round that she built off from there in the second round uh name flipped after name flip for someone who's nameless little slick stuff like that was crazy i'll put a brick in the casket like frank lucas just wanted to give you guys a little peer into QB, and then her third is just as powerful uh, into some of the really good content she had. It wasn't based on a curve. A lot of times when legends do good or old, old vets do good coming back, if they just do good, we call it great. We talk about the expectation curve. In my opinion, this one is as good as advertised. This was a complete dominant three-round showing from QB. And against a decent caution, not the caution, you know what I'm saying? Not a good caution. I would have liked to see her better. But against a decent caution, she clearly 30 her and had an incredible performance to start off for 2023. So shout out to QB. Somehow on a, on a card where there was two extreme kind of underdog battles of the night, I think that she had the biggest upset of the night. I do think there was another performer that was a little better, though, who we're going to get to here in a little bit, um, but had to mention her, and that's why she comes in at number three. At number two, this one, a 2A and 2B. You notice I hadn't mentioned this battle much, but I have Ill Will and Hollow to Dawn kind of tying right here for the second spot. What a main event. What 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 a main event. Clearly the biggest battle here on the card, the God tier level play. And then you get Ill Will, who to me is kind of top dog over there. I know he's taken some losses recently, but I do still think Ill Will is the best performer on the RBE brand, just ceiling wise. And what in the battle lived up to the hype in every way imaginable. In my personal opinion, I had Will taking the first round clear. I'm hearing some people say every round of the battle is debatable, which really just goes to show this could be a classic battle. It obviously is an extremely high quality battle. Uh, but in the first round, the periscopes, like the old Twitter, the number of hollows was dope. So many voices in my head. They started a group chat. I liked that a lot. Um, knocking on hollow walls. We mounting TVs. So much of that. The James Bond. You know what I'm saying? The the gave mama stepping on crack won't break your mama back, but it'll give her chest pains. Loved Ill Will's first, <clears throat> probably my favorite round of the battle overall. And as you get into the second and the third, these are extremely debatable. I would say preference, but they do have some similar style qualities. But what you see here is Hollow jabbing his way and mixing in the freestyles. If you're a Hollow fan, you especially will love his second. The I understand why you use the Jamaican accent. His, your roster's is bad. Fire. Uh, 45 under the seat, like cold fries and receipts. Fire. Um... And even in Hollow's third, the producer scheme was dope. Little Midwest angle was dope. The old model like Tyra Banks. So you're getting witty Hollow all over the place in the second and the third. But you also get a great will. The split like James Brown shit was amazing. Uh, 
the blow his wig out and look like Don is promoting Tyson again. Fire. Um, and even in his second, I'm the one that brought nighttime to daylight. Kind of went through his whole resume, which is what you should do in a big match like this. Just had a big match feel. Me, personally, I actually had Will. Gentleman's 30, which I know will sound crazy. Uh, edging the second and third and winning the first clear. But if someone has hollow second and third, can't be mad. Amazing battle. And that's why I have them both as the second best performers of the night. And that leaves us with the number one performer of the night. Who do I think stole the show? And I think for a lot of people that watched on the timeline, this might be, you know what I'm saying, kind of a shoe in uh, and You knew what was coming. But as the best performer in Divide and Conquer, we have to talk about Big K and his performance versus A-Ward. Now, coming into this battle, uh, a couple of the, the things that have led me to believe that Big K would win this battle, although he's a heavy underdog, is that A... Big K is not a likable person, just mostly on him. You know what I'm saying? No no real sympathy there with the, with the blocking and the way he talks to people. But with that being said, people overlook performances like his JC performance, like his ill will performance. This man has beaten Conceited, in my opinion, had a debatable. I had him beating Calico. Um, the head ice performance. This guy is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> people thought it was crazy. He made the top 50 for BET. But if you look at his work ethic, he is extremely battle-tested with a plethora of great wins. What I will give everyone is that in recent times, he, he had a prolonged slump. He had these, like, light work rounds for every battle, these, like, 132 minute rounds, uh, really based fully on the Ryan pockets, but a lack of great punches like you were usually used to, and not really the most potent angles or any of this post-Adi boom. It looked like a little bit of a lack of motivation. So I completely understand that. But another thing is his match, uh, the way K matches up against, for the lack of a better way to describe it, uh, white battle rappers with heavy emphasis on angling, content, and pen. What do I mean by that? He had a classic with Ilmac. I thought he was amazing in that battle. We all know about that. One of the best battles, if not the best battle in King of the Dot history. Clearly beat Mad Flex, one of the best ever over there. You know what I'm saying? And then you get to the A-Ward battle, and I think it's just similarly in that vein. It's kind of funny, but... Big K has an amazing performance against this list of white guys, you know what I'm saying, that have a lot of structure to their rounds and are very pen-based. You can even throw Pat Stay in there. Rest in peace to the great Pat Stay. And Big K had won that battle, so he's always kind of done good against this genre of competition. And while A-Ward's been on fire, I figured that K would find a way to... He's just street enough to kind of bully him around, but he also has an underrated comedy factor where he was going to clown something like Christianity, as he did in his second round versus Big Cannon with the fat angle, an angle that usually isn't great, but he turned that great. And this third round versus JC is short jokes. Some of the most basic jokes, but he's able to take his comedy and flip something so shallow into great rounds. And he did it here a lot of times uh, with the Christian content. If God is made, if you're made in God's image, that must mean that he's a he's a bitch. That is crazy. Um, the the fake sick angle to start out, uh, a a uh, you in trouble. That was crazy. Um, I'll knock out. I'll knock out your backup. That's how I reverse punch. All in the first round. Um, flow pockets all over the place. The first time you shot a gun, you probably went out with your big cousin. The first time I shot a gun, I closed my eyes and hit something. Big K's first is probably the best round he's I've heard from Big K since his first versus head ice. I mean, this is a really, really special round. Ward had a decent first, but K's first is damn near unbeatable. It's really one of the all-time greatest Big K rounds, and this is probably an all-time. I did a top five Big K performances. This would probably make the list after watching it. His second is really not that far behind either. Starts off with two extremely disrespectful rebuttals and the Swisher House rebuttal. And then from there, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a bullet in the barrel. I thought that was crazy. That was the round where he has the In God's Image bar, the Jesus Walks bar, the smoke. The first time she saw du uh, God, she smoked angel dust. So many quotables. I can't watch it. wait for you all to see this battle. I would recommend copying the VOD. I really think it was that good of an event that this is so worth copying the VOD afterwards. I would say Ward Edge the Third but even then the can't copy uh, rehearsal was funny i think it wasn't directed to a ward so it doesn't score too much but even his third was great just a masterful career high type of three rounds from big k and for me he was clearly the performer of the night taking the first two rounds clear and even debatably getting the third and that is my full rankings of the top three most disappointing and most impressive performers from the RB Divide and Conquer card. You guys let me know down in the comments if you saw the event. Who was your performer of the night and who do you think was the most disappointing of the night? Uh, it's really hard to find someone genuinely disappointing even though I put caution at one. I even think that there was some fun watching her performance. Really, really, really an amazing card top to bottom. Ill Will and Hollow lived up to it. Give Will Hitman Hollow. 
would love to see that book later in the year. If you're going to go and have a classic with Hollow and you can't keep getting God tiers from there, it just goes to show how kind of broken this system is of climbing the ladder and getting the big time matchups. Because to me, after seeing a performance like that, how could you not say that this is not one of the most dangerous battle rappers in the world de deserving of that type of plate? Uh, big K, return to form. Humongous win to start his 2023. Although Ward is going to start off on a loss here, I always expect Ward to bounce back. Uh, the next guy's in a lot of trouble, and I'm sure he keeps battling top tiers from here on out. Just a rough matchup for him and against an all-time version of whether people like it or not an all-time performer um so that was incredible coach and magic good battle pain and bad news good battle qb amazing comeback performance even rose had a great great performance that he didn't even make the list and i love rose's performance i'm gonna watch it again after i upload this man so so many things i like about this um but like i said comment down below of what you thought of the event and what you rate the event my personal rating i'm gonna go 8.59 just like i said in the beginning high hopes for this so i hope that you guys enjoyed my breakdown of this understood it you know think it's a fair assessment watch out for on let's talk battle rap 2 we will have a recap article for this event coming out definitely be doing some writing for that on my part as well as everybody else the staff gotta love the team those are my people over there um but yeah guys great great event it's been jay small reviews again y'all like comment subscribe i'm gonna catch you on the next one peace